Good afternoon. Hi, it's good seeing you all. I'm happy to be here today. This is Mary Ellen and I'm coming to you from the Warren County Library. This is the Warren County from home. Happens to be my kitchen. If you don't know me, my name is Mary Ellen and I do Pinteresting programs at headquarters and sometimes in other branches in our library system. And uh, I'm here today to do my very first live video about making a DIY face mask from fabric. It's something that's very important to do right now and we thought this would be a good way to start our virtual crafting program for adults. So what I will be showing you are three different mask styles. This one which is the Missouri Star Company, uh, M Missouri Star Quilt Company fabric mask with ties, the Instructables DIY cloth face mask, and the SewItOnline.com face mask. First, a little commercial from the library. I just want to touch base with you and let you know that we've received so many messages from our members saying that they miss us. And I want you to know that we really do miss you too. And we're doing our best to continue working to create programs and positive things for you to do at home while you're under this quarantine. If you visit our website, and I'm sure you do, at warrenlib.org, there are so many resources that we are putting up every day to help you fill your time with educational and enjoyable things to do for yourself and your family. So uh, if you go to the website and you see a slide of a picture that something looks interesting to you, click on it. It will take you to the links to all the things that you might be looking for. So if you see the one top of the page for remote resources for adults, for instance, you can choose virtual museum tours. How about visiting the British Museum today? How about the Guggenheim, the National Gallery of Art? You can do these all virtually from the comfort of your home and the safety of your home while we're closed. You know, I say we're closed and that means our doors are closed, but these virtual doors are open and you can still use a lot of library services from home. I know that a lot of people use the cloud library for ebooks and audiobooks, and people are using it and it's working. Hoopla, you can take out seven items now a month on Hoopla and know that they both stream or download to your home. Flipster, if you haven't tried our Flipster for magazines, check it out. You can check out and page through uh, probably around 50 titles at this point. So. If you're back on our website looking at adult resources, there are TED Talks, there's Rosetta Stone for languages, there's free Spotify that you can sign up for and listen to music during this time. So there's everything from coloring pages to book clouds. So check into the branch, check into the website, and you'll see what we have. There are a lot of remote learning things for kids too, of course, lots of educational activities, including art, science, math, um, history, reading clouds for kids, and lots of fun stuff for them too. So how about doing some Legos online or listening to bird sounds and then going outside and trying to identify those bird sounds. There are escape rooms there you can play with. There are virtual tours. You can take your kids to the zoo online. So realize all these things are available to you on our website, warrenlib.org, and in the meanwhile, we'll be trying some virtual programming like this one. So think about stopping in and seeing what we have to offer next. I'm going to be doing crafting. And if you know me, you know the things that I like. So I like things like paper flowers and felt stuffies. <clears throat> I like to make jewelry by hand. I like to make all kinds of things with paper. So I'll be doing something different every Thursday at this time, two o'clock. So check in 
and a couple days before I'll give you a list of what to have on hand if you want to do it with me or just watch if you want because that works too just to have a little friend with you while you're at home and know that the people from the library are still with you there's also uh, a lot of other things coming up on that website so keep an eye for the virtual book club that's coming up Suzanne's gonna be starting with the woman in the window there's story times already happening on Tuesday afternoons with Lina and Wednesday mornings with Erin. The Makerspace at Home is about to start on Mondays and Fridays at 2 p.m. And even a tween book club is happening on Wednesdays with Miss Christina. So if you haven't gotten to the website yet, get there and check out all the things that are available from the library. We want to be with you through this time. We can't be with you in person, so we're going to do it the best we can. So, on to the face masks. Let me grab this. All right, the first one that I was going to show you was the uh, Jenny Doan Missouri Star Quilt Company Fabric Tie Face Mask. Any of these things can be made very, very simply. So if you, at one time, got a sewing machine, haven't used it in years, and it's dusty in a closet somewhere, pull it out, and if you can sew around a rectangle, you can make a face mask. If you've got kids, they can help. They can make their own. So all of these are quite simple, and I'm going to go step by step through each pattern and show you how to do it. Jenny Doan shows you how to do one with strips going across the top and bottom instead of elastic to hold it. If you're not aware of it, and you might well be, that elastic has gotten very scarce. So it's very, very hard to find elastic. So she will just make a strip of fabric and use that. Another way you can use Jenny's pattern, instead of having the strips go across the top, you can have the strip going across the side. The strip across the side, I've been told, is very comfortable for those who have been wearing them. So I'm going to show you this version. Happy to see a couple of comments there. Hi there, Donna. Hi, Tim. I didn't know if I'd be able to read the comments from here. I'll do my best. So if you have any questions, pop them up there and see if I'll be able to help you. All right, so making Jenny's fabric tie face mask, you need two pieces of fabric that are six inches by nine inches. You need a fabric for the front and a fabric for the lining. In terms of any of the fabrics used to make a face mask, there are a few rules to follow. You want a woven fabric, meaning it's not a stretch fabric, it's tightly woven, and it's pretty tightly woven so that it keeps the air inside. You don't really want something that is open weave that if you cough the germs will go right through. Realize that the CDC has recommended the wearing of face masks in public and so that's kind of why we're doing this and if you live in New Jersey like I do you are required as of today to wear a face mask in any public store or building. So if you're working in the store or if you're going in the store, you must wear a mask. So what better time than now to start making yourself, your family, and your friends some masks. They're not medical grade masks. They will not save you from getting a virus. But what they do is they help keep the germs to yourself. They will save your family member from catching your illness or a stranger who's passing you by. That's why we're doing this. So back to the mask. So these are two six by inches, six by nine inch rectangles. And we're going to place them right side together. And we're going to sew a quarter inch in across the top and across the bottom. Very simple. Straight stitch, lock it at the top, lock it at the bottom. Turn that inside out. And because it's open on the sides, you can get your hand right in there. Turn it inside right, so now you've got the front and the back all ready to go. At this point, you will put three pleats in it. There's one pleat, there's a second pleat, there's a third pleat. 
You don't have to be super, super careful about the width of those pleats. If you can get three pleats in and still feel that this is wide enough to go across your face, you've done it fine. When you put those pleats in, as you see here, I've put the pins in right here so I can sew down the edge. Hey, I see there, Donna, that you don't have a sewing machine. The third mask I show is going to be really simple to make by hand. So stay with me and see if that one works for you. I suppose you could do any of these by hand, but if you have a machine, it's a lot easier. Okay, I'll show you another trick at the end if you don't have a sewing machine. So here we are. We've got this pleated and we're sewn down the side and down the side. And then if we've created a tie, we can sew the tie on here that's going to hold it on. What Jenny has you do is she has you cut a two and a half inch strip the width of your fabric. Most fabric comes in 42 or 44 inches wide. And you fold it in half, you fold it in half again, and in half again. And that way, the raw edges are on the inside. And it's very easy then to take it to your sewing machine and sew it down. But before you sew it down, take the center of it, pin it with the mask inside, like so and then sew the edge of the seam. Sew it all the way down to the end, then go back and sew all the way down to the end, and you've got one of your strips on. If you repeat that action on the other side, you have your strip on too. I would suggest that after your strips are on, tie a knot in the end, not just to keep this from raveling, but it helps it when it goes in the dryer from not getting caught in everything. So I would say take all of your long strips like this also and tie them in a knot so when you put them in the dryer, they don't get all tangled up and caught on everything else because that can be really, really hard to untangle them. Let me see. I see a couple of comments there. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Hi, Lynn. Sorry you don't have a sewing machine either. We'll try with one of the uh, masks that I do at the end and see if that will work for you. I hope that it will. So that was the Jenny Dome Missouri Star Quilt Company. If you're a quilter, you know Jenny, and she does wonderful work, and her videos are fabulous. So there are links to her videos on our website, and all of the things that we're doing here have links as well. The second mask that I'm showing Hey Joe, I see you there. Uh, second mask I'm doing is from Instructables.com. Instructables has all kinds of maker things on that are fabulous. And what I found there was my favorite mask. So I'm showing you that one. If you go to their site and go to DIY cloth face mask. You want to go over the pleats again? Sure, Miriam. Let me just oh, go back to that other... So here's your rectangle from, uh, from Jenny Doan, and if you fold one down, can you see that pleat? And then you go down one more, and grasping the two sides really helps. And then you go down one more. And so what you end up with is one pleat, two pleat, three pleats. And as you do each one, put the pin in to hold them. I hope that helps. Hey Beth, how are things in Florida? And I see you Karen, I know you know how to sew these. So let's go back to my Instructables uh, mask. This was the one that I liked the best and I have had a lot of um, information back that it's very comfortable to wear. So uh, if you go to, to that page on Instructables for the DIY cloth face mask, you get patterns like this. They give you a pattern for large, a pattern for medium, and a pattern for small. This is the medium size pattern, 
and it's the one that I found worked best for me and for people that I have uh, had tried on. It fit my husband well and it fit other people that I sent it to. Glad you, glad you saw that part, Miriam. Thank you. So the first thing you do after you have that pattern, let me mention that what I'm using for lining material here. I talked about the 100% cotton tight weave fabric that we used here. And keep in mind, if you've, if you've saved some good quality fabric for that special quilt, now is the time to use it. What's more of a special occasion than safety, right? So you uh, use a nice quality cotton for this. And if you should happen to have flannel fabric, I would use the flannel for the lining. That will feel soft against the face and it'll also do a really good job of catching the germs as they pass through. So I have taken this pattern that I printed off from their site. And let me say, if your printer is not working, like my printer is not working currently, this side is four inches long. This side is five and a half. And the height here is nine and a half inches. You could draw this on, the on a piece of paper yourself and come out with the pattern. It's a very, very simple shape. So I've placed that on my fabric and I've cut out two of the front and two of the lining. And then I've sewn the quarter inch right down this edge. Now with every bit of sewing on, on these pieces, lock the stitches top and bottom. You want this to be as sturdy as possible so it can get washed over and over again. All right. So once you sew that, you can turn it right side out and you see we almost have the shape of the mask. So you do that on both the flannel lining or the cotton lining and the other piece of fabric. Now if you don't have the flannel lining, I would suggest you use a different fabric just so the wearer knows which side they've been wearing by their mouth and which side they've been wearing on the outside because that's important too. So. If you uh, now have the, the, the lining and the front piece right sides together and you will pin it and it really helps to pin the top seam and the bottom seam and the corners first. So then when you pin all the way around, nothing will be shifted. So once it's pinned, now it's time to sew. And once again, you're just sewing with a quarter inch stitch. Excuse me. And you're gonna sew all the way around it. So, how did I do that? I wanna leave a hole because I'm gonna to wanna to turn this inside right. So I start here, lock the stitch, come down to the corner, come down to this side. I'm just gonna go all the way around the whole piece at a quarter inch and lock that stitch again right there. Once that's sewn, I can put my hand in here and I can turn it inside right. At this point, it might help you to press it just so it lays flat. The next thing you'd wanna to do too is sew a quarter inch seam all the way around the outside because that will close up that little hole that you left for the turning and it'll also stabilize it. I also sewed a line right along this seam through all sides. Now that mask is pretty much done, right? That's what Instructables would say. Instructables would say, fold over the two edges, feed through some elastic or some ties, and you're done. Well, if you know me, I always have to change a pattern a little bit, and that's what I did on this one. I put it on and I felt like it wasn't feeling tight enough to my face and I thought how can I make this tighter? Well, I got the idea to take a piece of bias tape and this is what bias tape looks like. It comes in a little package like this. It's something you can make yourself or you can buy it easily and it's kind of a binding that you would put around a blanket or 
I make aprons and I put the binding around the edge of the apron to strengthen it. If you have some bias tape, you can pin about a seven inch strip right across the top of your mask and sew very close to the edge, right along the top edge, and then come back along the bottom and do right along the bottom. And what that has left you is an open channel for you to put a wire in there. Now, this is a regular floral wire, about a 14 gauge, and easy to find, easy to get. You might have electrical wire in your house. You might be doing jewelry work like I do and have wire for that, or you could have even have a pipe cleaner. What I do that's different from anybody else that has done the wires is I leave a bit of the wire sticking out because I feel like I can take it out, wash it, and slide it right back in, and I don't have to open up any seams. So let me show you how tight a mask like this will fit. Let me just put it on. Very hard with my hairdo. Okay, once it's on, if you push this wire all the way across, do you see how it fits this tightly to my face? This keeps more air from coming out or going in and makes a safer environment for the person who's wearing it. Now I happen to have elastic when I made this one but as elastic has become scarce, and I hope more comes in because it is being made and it's being shipped when it's ready, you could use um, a ribbon. Grosgrain is one that they say is a very good ribbon. How about shoelaces? I've noticed this week that a lot of people are cutting up t-shirts, and if you have um, knit material and you cut a one-inch strip and pull on it and it still is tight, then you know you can use that as a comfortable tie. The way I would feed my tie through that one inch opening is I would put the, uh, the wire or the tie, the, um, the tie or the ribbon onto a, a little piece of wire or even a bobby pin and put it through here. And you see how you can pull it right through without fussing. I tried the thing with the um, safety pin and it still was too frustrating. So just a little piece of, of wire or uh, a, a, a bobby pin would work great for that. So this was a very um, a comfortable mask. People who have been wearing them have told me that they've been comfortable. And, and let me tell you, if you haven't worn a mask yet, it's, it's not a comfortable thing to wear a mask. Um, I find it great. Uh, really great difficulty in feeling that something you know I have to breathe through something else but it is so worth it to do this to protect yourself and to protect everybody that you love too and if you imagine the medical personnel who are doing this um, they are in great discomfort their ears are hurting from this uh, elastic around their ears so we're coming up with different systems for things that can hold it behind your head and uh, so keep your eye out. We're coming up, people who are sewing like crazy are coming up with new ideas every day. All right, I see some messages on there. So that was the pattern that, that I like the best. This is what the wire would look like. Um, if you were buying it from walmart.com, it would be in floral wire. If you were buying it from some other uh, uh, company online, it would, it would probably just say a 14 gauge, it could be 16 gauge, but uh, that's what your wire would look like, all right? So that is the instructables.com mask. Now this mask, this mask that I found um, online is at the Sew It Online site, and Jan there has a million mask challenge going on. Um, you really should know how many people are busy making these masks, and uh, in our area, they have been doing a fabulous job. I follow on Facebook the 101 County COVID-19 
hand sewn donation page. If you get involved with making masks and you want to know where to donate them, join this page. They are so happy to see what you're doing and they are also uh, showing us pictures of people wearing them. And it really makes you feel good to be able to help when you're home and you, you have the time and you have the fabric and you have the patience, why not participate in helping as best you can? They are also making bonnets and uh, they are really welcome as well. If you have more skills, uh, they keep coming up with things that sewers can make to help our responders. I mean, these folks that work in, in the libraries are the heroes that live next door to us. So uh, let's support them as best we can. Now the, the Sew It Online, the Sew It Online version of the mask is this one with the, with the pleat in it. I actually think it's quite comfortable because there's a lot of space inside for your breath. You see how far it sits, sits away from your face. I was speaking to someone um, the other day online who, who was a doctor who said, this is an old style doctor's mask. Well, everything old is new again, right? So this one I think could be sewn by hand. Um, what's interesting about this one, and if you were sewing it by hand, you wouldn't have to do this, but it also leaves one side open so you could put in there a filter material if you like. A lot of people are putting a piece of um, paper towel in there or a tissue perhaps because as moisture collects, your mask becomes, uh, it will not work as well. So if, you're, if your mask is full of moisture, you might want to try a liner inside that you can pull out and throw away. But I would say, think about what you're breathing through. This is something as you're breathing out, but you're also breathing in. You don't want to put anything in there that might be damaging to your own lungs when you're breathing in, okay? I mean, I've watched some uh, reports on television. There was one on last night where they were showing um, some masks that police were using in Philadelphia, and they were very, very skimpy masks, and they were all wet on the front. And I was thinking, that is really, really not doing the job. If you are going to be uh, needing a mask for many, many hours at a time, you need more than one mask. If your mask is wet, you probably need to take it off and put another one on. So it's something to think about too. There might come a time in which you wanna have multiple masks for folks in your family. So sorry, I keep getting sidetracked, but I hope that doesn't, doesn't bother you. So here's the Sew It Online, where I was thinking about what might be the easiest one to sew. They're still sewing, but it would be easy. Well, number one, if you're not a sewer, you wouldn't have any fabric, perhaps. Let's hope you have thread, because I don't know what you're going to do without thread. But without fabric, what might you have? Well, this shirt, a man's dress shirt, or even one of your own, that's a tightly woven cotton, is a perfect material for the front of that mask. My husband saw this here and said, hey, what are you doing with my favorite shirt? Well, I'm just demonstrating, don't worry. I don't have to cut his shirt up, but you certainly could get an eight and a half by 11 or an eight inch by 11 piece out of this shirt to make the Sew It Online uh, mask, right? Now, what would you use for the lining? Well, why not the flannel shirt? Wash it, clean it, and it's ready to go. You could cut it up and you could use that as the lining as well. So think about it. Any fabric that you're using for these masks, you're gonna pre-wash. So if it's a shirt, you're gonna pre-wash it. You wanna make sure there's nothing on it and, and it's ready to go, all right? My weatherman, uh, Adam Joseph on uh, Channel 6 Philly last night, showed how to make a mask out of a, a gym sock. He used a used gym sock, and that's the desperation people are in. So let's hope you don't have to use a gym sock and just cut up one of these shirts. 
All right. So the Sew It On line has you cut two eight and a half, excuse me, not eight and a half, eight by 11 um, rectangles of fabric. If you don't even know what eight by 11 is, just get a regular piece of paper and that would be eight and a half by 11 and that will work fine. So if you want it with the open pocket inside, you would have to sew over a half inch on the top of one and a half an inch on the top of the other one and then place them right sides together. If you're not doing the pocket, you don't have to do that. And you're just going to sew a quarter inch all the way around. Now, if you're if you're not doing the pocket, you want to leave a two inch piece open so you'll be able to turn this inside out. If you're doing the pocket, this part will be open and it'll be quite easy to turn it inside inside out. All right. So when you so this this piece is sewn. And you see how easy it would be to turn this inside right. So now we've got the front and we've got the lining. And how would we make that mask fit? We're gonna put some darts in it. So what, what you do is you fold this in half, long ways. And the way Jan says in her video, she says, think of a hot dog, you want it the long way, because remember it's gonna go across this way and you're going to take your ruler and you're going to make a dot three inches in from the folded side and three inches in from the folded side you're going to draw a line from the corner to that dot and whatever you're going to use for a strap you're going to pin right onto that line so when you sew from here to here It'll catch that strap and hold it. Now, this was just a strip of fabric, folded over and folded over, and a sewing line going against it. If you do not have the machine, that would be quite time consuming, and I would suggest finding something like a grow grain ribbon. If you have any kind of ribbons in your supply, the ones with the lines across like this are very sturdy, and that would work well. Shoelaces work well also. If, if elastic becomes available again, that would really be your best bet. But what's good about this is it only needs one strip. You've sewn those two lines, and when you turn that, you turn that inside right, your mask is done because the dart is what's making the shape, and the strip is one long connected strip and you just cut it in half right here and tie a knot and tie a knot and here it can go on. Now that's a very comfortable, a very comfortable mask and very, very easy to make. I'm going to go back to the people who are sewing by hand and I'm just going to mention if you're sewing around this rectangle by hand, do a couple running stitches and then do a back stitch. Do a couple running stitches, then do a back stitch. You wanna lock those stitches every once in a while. What you might wanna do is tie a knot once in a while because you want this to stay sturdy. So that would be you know, the best way if you were gonna to try to sew it by hand. All right. Now, something that's been shown a lot on television lately is how to make a mask from a, um, a bandana. So a lot of people have bandanas and it seems to me that um, maybe men would be more apt to want to wear a bandana um, as a mask than, than a, a you know cutesy fabric or whatever. But they show you a very simple way to do it and ultimately I'm not sure that it really is the best way to make a mask. They make it look very simple. I'll show you what some of the faults are in making that mask. So if you've taken a, a full-size bandana and folded it in to itself, right to the center, so there's four folds. When you fold it the last time, this is the shape that you've got left. 
They then tell you to add hair ties or a rubber band like this onto the bandana. Once you've done that and placed those rubber bands in this to fit your face, they want you to fold in one side, fold in the other side, and then tuck this one side into the folds of the other side. And then they say, you know, pull out the rubber bands and voila, your mask is done. Well, when I've tried this, voila, it falls apart and opens up. So what you would want to do if you try this and you need to use a mask like this, put at least a safety pin on the inside here so it's not right up against your face or take a couple of hand stitches or something there so that this mask will stay in place. Also, if you have the thinner hair ties, they're much more comfortable than these thick ones. You'll, your ears will become sore from these very, very quickly. So uh, it, it could work in, a, in an instance if you um, attach something here to hold it tight. What you don't wanna do is be out somewhere that you feel <coughs> excuse me, is a dangerous place and your mask is now falling apart in public. So um, I certainly wouldn't want that to happen. Hi, Judy. Thank you for coming. So this is pretty much my review of, uh, of the uh, face masks. And please leave me questions in the chat box. I might need to follow up with people if there is something that I need to explain better. There are links on the website. There's a slide and there are links for more info on making masks. And I really want to thank every, everyone who has been sewing uh, masks for medical personnel and for your families. What you're doing is you are protecting me when you're doing that. You are protecting you. You are protecting your own families and your own friends. And once you've made enough for yourself, think about how you can reach out in the community to make some more. Uh, you might want to reach out to that uh, 100 and Warren group that's making masks. There are, are many local ones there. Um, but even people in your own life, what about your mailman? Uh, what about someone you see in the grocery store who, who maybe only has one mask and they, they might need another one for a comfort, personal comfort level so they can be washing one and wearing one. It will really make you feel that you are participating and helping in a time when there's not a lot that we can do um, to help. So um, in closing, I would like to say that um, I'll be here next Thursday. I think that I'm probably going to do um, paper flowers of some kind because it is a, a joy to me and I haven't had a chance to work on any. Um, we could do um, paper roses and you could use book pages. If you have a book that you're looking to discard, if you um, have just plain paper, that is perfect. It does not need to be cardstock at all. So if you have cardstock, that would be great. Uh, future flowers I would like to maybe make would, would be um, something, something like these uh, spring flowers or uh, crocuses or daffodils or perhaps uh, somewhere down the line, line uh, a, 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 a coffee filter flower like that. And so we're gonna be doing some fun things. This was a kind of serious uh, question today of what we were doing. And um, I hope you can visit me again uh, next Thursday when, when I'll be doing something else at two o'clock. And let's see, I will, once again, before I leave, I'm gonna put the camera down onto the links for the three masks that I showed you today. And I'm gonna say happy sewing, be well, be careful, be safe. I hear everyone saying be safe. And the way to be safe right now is to be careful. Follow the rules, stay inside if you can, wash your hands. And if you must go out into public, wear your mask. Thanks so much for visiting with me. I'm going to put the camera down now onto that page. Let's see if I can do that. All right. So here are links 
and they are available on the website. Let's see, a little bit of trouble. There we go. And those are the three masks that we did today, plus a link to videos to see videos from professionals, not one like me, who's this is my first time. So wish me luck for next week, and I'll see you then. Thanks so much for coming.